Hello there. I'm Helen Sadler, your Destiny Heifer. Thank you for joining me on today. I want to thank all of you that have subscribed to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Those of you who have not subscribed, take the time to subscribe and push that bell. And every time I upload content, you will be alerted. Thank you for the many emails. Keep them coming and asking the questions and I will keep the answers coming. Thank you so much. This is part two. We said that we was going to do uh, part one and then we was going to come back and do part two on the psychology and the torment of the mind. How the narcissist really bring you in a psychological torment because they know they cannot be measured. They know they cannot be seen. They can hide that. The narcissist knows that, especially the upper middle and the greater narcissist who are specialists at psychological torment, mental torment. The narcissist depend on you not understanding your feeling, gaslighting you, lying. So emotional trauma can occur from that. And because the devaluation really started upon introduction, it is smeared over by being love bombed. And what happened is the narcissist get to know who you are. And as the narcissist get to know who you are, if you notice in the beginning of the relationship, it was so much attention to you. So many questions they asked. Why? Because they was learning you. And they begin to mirror you. And when they mirror you, you actually adore yourself because the mirror is a reflection of you and it's not the narcissist. The narcissist has a mask on until the mask falls. So devaluation start. And so once the narcissist realize your humanity, once the narcissist realize that you can make mistakes, now you start to be devaluated. Now the psychological torment start. And these soul hunters are very diligent because of the hole and the emptiness that's inside of them. And they want to be filled. They crave to be filled. And this is why the narcissist has to have fuel, energy to keep going, to try to cover up those holes, to try to put a bottom to it, but there is no bottom. And so you find yourself and the red flags are missed because in the relationship, they will say something shocking. You will excuse it, deflect it, and they will keep going and building and bringing you more into a relationship where even the narcissist may ask you to marry. It may be a quick proposal or you ask to move in with you. And then you look up and they're in your house or you're in theirs. So let's talk about tormentor. Remember, we gave a definition last time of the torment. And the torment is a person who inflicts severe or mental or physical suffering on someone. And it causes a great sensitivity. But we want to talk about something. When you have already, especially those of you, that this is not your first narcissistic relationship. Well, not narcissistic. I, I watch that word because being a narcissist and being narcissistic is two different things because we all can have a touch of narcissism where we can be selfish and act selfish, but we're not a narcissist. The narcissist is a personality disorder and many of them have not been diagnosed, but they have all of the attributes of a narcissist. And in the time necessary, like court cases, uh, child uh, cases, to decide the supervision of the child or where the child will go with the parent, you cannot make a self-diagnosis. Don't do it. If you don't have a professional diagnosis, then don't go to a professional and call them a narcissist. However, there are traits and there are characteristics that let you know what you may be dealing with. And those characteristics, if there's five or six out of the nine traits, more than likely you're dealing with a narcissist. And the narcissists love to torment. Why? Because they are trying to fill their voids by giving you voids. 
And when you look like them, they feel better. But that's when the discard comes because they, now you become the mirror. And that's what the narcissists don't want. And you once mirrored yourself, you were the mirror for the narcissist that you look so good, so appealing. Now the narcissist is tearing down that appeal and you are starting to look like the narcissist, sound like the narcissist, but you are not a narcissist. You're wounded and you hurt, especially psychologically. And sometimes the narcissist, based on the type of narcissist you have, the caliber of the narcissist can depict the character, the uh, personality, how they are. The cerebral is a thinker. The covert is shy, charming. The malignant is vicious. And they just outspoken and just rude. The somatic is caught up in themselves. And so there's different attributes with different narcissists. Let's talk about the mental uh, incapacitation that the narcissist wants you to live in and wants you to walk in. So the narcissist torment you and they bring you to a place of sensitivity. So you're always reacting, never responding. So, and they gaslight. So you would think that you're crazy. You don't really know your reality because now you start to self doubt. And then they start a system of calibration. The calibration is to get you intrinsically in a step or in rhythm with what the narcissist want you to be or want you to think. Because once the narcissist shape you, they can pretty much do whatever they want to do. They are not held, you are responsible for what they do because they know that you're going to always deflect. You're going to always give them room. And when you put up a boundary, you have a tendency to allow that boundary to be moved without challenge. Because once the narcissist overstep the boundary and you accept them on those terms, the narcissist feel like they can do anything. Why? Because you keep accepting them. So they have no reason to change. They're going to stay the same. And remember, the primary supply usually get the worst treatment because they get the most time. So they calibrate you and adjust your character to what they want. And after calibrating you, they provoke you. They provoke you. They manipulate you. How do they do that? They manipulate you by keep bringing you into situations. Then get a witness of the situation so that witness can attest to what the narcissist is saying. You got to remember a narcissist think ahead because nine times out of 10, when the masks fall, they know that you're not going to like them. They know that you're going to want to leave. And they got these holes of abandonment, rejection, and all kind of issues. Even the golden child who think I don't have a right to think everybody deciding for me. So they feel like they don't have a life. So they make sure you don't have a life. The psychological effect of this is they will use politics, they will use anything they can get. They will use police, they will use abuse. And like I told you in the first video, you know, you have a dinner and then the narcissist gets you to drink wine and you drink wine. Now, all of a sudden, the narcissist irritate you and they badger you to the point you call the police because you can't take it anymore. Where the narcissist say, you can see she's been drinking. All right. Well, if the, if the police smell the alcohol or the narcissist get you to take drugs and they can see that there is a re, uh, uh, that you may be intoxicated or you may seem high. And guess what? The narcissist is dressed right. The narcissist is calm while you are going off the chain. And the narcissist, see, this is what I go through. She does this all the time. You can even ask her family. Her family knows how she is. And she always blamed me because she won't be responsible. So this is when the manipulation come in. They manipulate the police to get them out. And you know what? If you keep doing that and they can't find any physical abuse and it's only psychological, now you are doubting that you can get help. And the police are doubting that you need help. So they would think that you're an alcoholic or you're on drugs and they would discard any kind of story you have. So now the narcissist puts you in the corner and tell you nobody believe you. 
why their family don't believe you, the police don't believe you, and you are starting to doubt you. All of this cortisol that is released in the body start having an effect on the body. And there is something called an HPA axis. And what it is, it's your threat system. Whether you uh, fight, uh, 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 fight, flight, or freeze. This helps you to make a cognitive decision in the time of stress. When you need to move and that adrenaline is going. Well, this ser not serotonin, this cortisol is releasing your body to help you get out of situation and to give you the energy you need to get out of this situation. But it's not there to maintain in your body. It can be very destructive. But what happens when you are under stress, under stress, all these cortisol is releasing from the brain and it goes through your body. Pretty soon, it breaks the system of alert and you no longer can tell that you're in the alert system because you are under consistent stress. You're under consistent anxiety. You haven't had peace. You start not to sleep. And now you've got maximum anxiety. You are, you are having sleep problems. So now you're stressed because the body is in a state of unrest. The mind is in a state of unrest. This called mind fog. Mind fog come in, it affects your memory. It affects your reality. And what happens is you start seeing yourself in a different light because now the APA, now the uh, APA system axis is broken. And you can't tell. And you are so stressed out. And guess what the narcissist sees? He sees that level of stress. He sees the level of doubt. And you know what you do? When you get stressed out like that, and that cortisol is going through your body, damaging organs, damaging your mind, damaging the regulation of the blood flow. It affects every area of your body. We have something, uh, hypercortalism. Uh, is subject to PTSD and trauma. Not everybody that uh, go through trauma situation, stress situation, break down or go to PTSD or see PTSD. It depends on how the, the strength is emotionally. Because some people, they don't went through trauma, they don't went through this over and over again, and they have built up a system that helped them fight against trauma. Well, another person, they don't went through trauma, breaks down. So everyone is different. And you cannot go on one situation and do a diagnosis or do an analogy and put it uh, across the board because that doesn't work. Now, when you get cortisol in your body, look at all the ways it can affect you. It can affect your digestive system. It can reduce your immunity, which make you subject to all kinds of infections and virus. And it can delay healing. Like what? Like if you were a diabetic and all these cortisone is releasing your body. And when the cortisol is releasing your body, what happened is it dumps all this glucose in the system. It overrides system. Your, your blood pressure is off the charts. Diabetes off the charts. And what cortisol does when it is emitted in the body and it's in abundance, it can slow down your healing. Your healing is slowed down. It lowers the serotonin and it can create, and when your serotonin is low, you can have more pain because the serotonin is supposed to admit that and help that. But when the serotonin is low, you can have experienced more pain and un, your diabetes, if you're dealing with that, uncontrolled. Headaches, migraine, blurred vision, digestive uh, issues, bowel issue, um, it's a numerous things that this cortisol, when you are under stress, that can do. And you cannot excuse it when you're being tormented mentally. Because if you call for help, they can't see that your mind is hurting. They can't see that your emotion is hurting. But what you can do is understand the situation resolute it in your mind to save your life and the life of your children. What would be the best answer 
for you? How can you bounce back? How can you lower that cortisone level? How can you come from under that stress where your BT is off the chart, which can cause stroke, heart attack? Come on here. And angina, angina, all of these pains, all of these dysfunction and malfunctions that goes on in the body. It can cause you to age. It can create sleeplessness. And some of you are dealing with this. You say, I can't sleep. And all of your dreams, it's like you have terror in your dreams. The terror that you live goes into your subconscious. You cannot function properly as a parent, even though there's children involved. Why? Because you're stressed out. Your ambition, your drive, your planning, all of that leaves. I'm telling you, you have to recognize when you are with a soul hunter, when you are in psychological torment, it causes uh, palpitations of the heart. It, it affects your lungs. You cannot breathe properly. So when you don't breathe properly, you're not allowing oxygen to be carried through the body like it should or to the brain. And that's why stroke can be imminent. The narcissist can create biological havoc, psychological havoc. And it's something that you can't ignore. You cannot ignore this. You cannot act as if it's not there. You cannot. To be the best you possible, to be the healthiest you possible, to be the best parent that you can be, to children who depend on you, you have to understand psychological torment and that the narcissist is not given to change. They're given to pattern. They're given to the same. 40 years, 50 years. I've had people that were 70 years and maybe the 71st year, the narcissist has left or they left. And it was the same. They never had the confidence of being loved. There was always a question. You have an opportunity to think now. You have an opportunity not to be tormented. Psychologically, physically, in any way. Your will is at stake. The ability to keep fighting till you win. The ability to say, I won't give up. The ability, fight, flight, or freeze. No more running. Time to fight. Because I refuse to freeze, especially when you have children. Psychological torment is horrible. Brain fog. You're 40 years old and you can't remember. You have the keys in your hands and you're looking for the keys. So your sensitivity, even to the feelings of sensation because of the psychological effect, you can't feel the keys in your hand. So you walk around for an hour looking for your keys for 15 minutes, looking for your keys. They're in your hand. You're looking for your glasses. They're on your face. You have to decide. This cortisol has to stop because you end up being paranoid with children. Driving and have to work. The narcissist is very inconsiderate, con inconsiderate of your emotions. Know that. Know that this trauma bonding, because that's what it is. Future faking, when they know that you're going to leave, they shift. And they'll do something that seems like it's nice. Because the trauma bonding is what they do is bond you, traumatize you, bond you, traumatize you, bond you, traumatize you, bond you, traumatize you. Even if it's psychological. Because there are some narcissists, they're not going to physically violate you. Especially the upper mid narcissists and the greater narcissists. Why? Because physical violation can be confirmed. All they got to do is look at you. But who can confirm unless there's a witness or they do a brain scan? They can't confirm that you've been emotionally assaulted, triangulated, shouting, preventing you from sleeping, get flying monkeys, 
putting your family against you, smearing your name, psychological effect. Let's deal with it. Your mind is powerful. God knew what he was doing. He gave us a mind. How we use it is also a gift of choice. You can continue or sometime you have to put up a stop sign and say enough is enough. I hope you like this video. This is so much material and so many places we can go. Let's go to where you fit best being the best you possible, being the most liberated you, free you, and the children. If you feel that you're in danger, 1-800-799-7933. You can get help. You do, you do not have to sit and think you alone and think there's no help, and think there's no protection. Always help. Always protection. You're not alone, and don't think you're the only one going through this. You are not. 1-800-799-7233. one 800 799 7233. If you feel like you're being physically violated, mentally tormented, and you need help, please feel free to call that number. They understand your situation. They are well aware and prepared to help you in any sense and to protect you and the children. Call if you need help. Those of you that need a therapist psychology today, you can get a therapist. Make sure they understand what a narcissist is. Life coaching, you can contact me at destinyhepper12s at gmail.com. Destinyhepper12s at gmail.com. I also recommend Dr. Carmen Bryan, Telsha Edinburgh. You have help. The T on NPD and overcoming narcissist abuse, Karen Smith. These people can help you. You're not alone. And when that serotonin drop, a lot of times you feel like you don't even want to make it. Suicide seems so good. It's not good for you. Life is huge. Life is big. We can do this together. If you need help, 1-800-799-7233. I want to leave it there. Intense subject, intense time. But I want you to know you're not alone. Write me, destinyhepper12s at gmail.com. I am here for you. I'm Helen Sadler, your Destiny Helper, and I'm looking to see you on the next video. And remember, the next time we meet with this subject, we will be live. God bless you.